World History Chapter 1, The Peopling of the World, Prehistory till 2500 BC. Humans migrate throughout much of the world and begin to develop tools, art, agriculture, and cities. Section 1, Human Origins in Africa. Fossil evidence shows that the earliest humans originated in Africa and spread across the globe. Prehistory is the time before the invention of writing, which took place about 5,000 years ago, or around 3,000 BCE. BCE refers to before the current era. We use BCE to remove religious influence from time. CE refers to the current era. CA is an abbreviation for circa, which is Latin for an approximation around or about. History is the branch of knowledge that records past events. What we know about history and prehistory comes by the work of archaeologists who study bones and artifacts, which are human-made objects, anthropologists who study culture, one's uh, way of life, and paleontologists who study fossils, from plant or animal remains that are preserved in ancient rock. In 1978, Mary Leakey and her team of anthropologists discovered prehistoric footprints in Tanzania, Africa. These footprints belong to hominids, which are creatures that walk upright. In 1974, a team of anthropologists found another hominid in Ethiopia. This one was three and a half million years old and they nicknamed it Lucy. The discovery helped prove that hominids were able to walk upright much earlier than first believed. Walking upright helped hominids travel long distances much easier than their ancestors. They had also developed the opposable thumb. The Paleolithic Age, or the Old Stone Age, lasted from about 2.5 million years ago until 8000 BC. During this time, the use of stone tools and fire probably developed. The Neolithic Age, on the other hand, lasted from about 8,000 B.C. until 3,000 B.C. The Paleolithic Age had cold temperatures and large glaciers, while the Neolithic Age tended to see warmer temperatures. Homo habilis is a two and a half million year old hominid fossil that was founded by Lewis and Mary Leakey in Tanzania. It refers to man of skill because it may have used tools. About 1.6 million years ago, Homo erectus appeared in East Africa. Homo erectus refers to upright man that used intelligence to develop technology. Technology is the ways we apply knowledge, tools, and inventions. Homo erectus developed tools to dig, scrape, cut, and also became very skillful hunters. It was also most likely the first hominid to use fire and may have actually developed a language. It was the first hominid to migrate from Africa and move to Asia and Europe. Homo sapiens is the name for modern humans. They had much larger brains than Homo erectus. Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons began to appear after this time period. These, however, are not ancestors of Homo sapiens. Neanderthals had powerful muscles and thick bones. They lived 200,000 to 30,000 years ago in Europe and Southwest Asia. They had developed religious beliefs and had performed rituals. We know much of this because they had buried their dead with valuables and other tools. They lived in caves and shelters that were made of wood and skin. Cro-Magnons appeared about 40,000 years ago. They were physically ident identical to modern humans. They hunted in groups and they were much better hunters than Neanderthals. They had an advanced skill in spoken language. They had migrated from North Africa to Europe and Asia. Their population had grown quickly, and they eventually replaced the Neanderthals. New fossil discovery places hominids in Africa about six to seven million years ago. Stone tools suggest tool making began earlier than previously thought. The stone flute suggests Neanderthals might have made music. Cave drawings of people, Animals give clues to the ways of life. Section 2. Humans tried to control nature. The development of agriculture leads to a larger population. Paleolithic humans were nomads, which meant that they moved in search of food. In addition to this, they also dug up plants, 
made and repaired tools, and found secure places to rest. They also hunted animals, collected plant foods, and were hunter-gatherers. Cro-Magnons had more than 100 specialized tools, including bone needles, in order to sew. Early modern humans created art. They created cave paintings, animal sculptures, rock engravings, and other paintings. They had jewelry that was made of seashells, lion teeth, and bear claws. They had bought polished beads from mammoth tusks as well. The Neolithic Revolution was an agricultural revolution that began about 10,000 years ago. This happened to also coincide with the last major ice age. The Neolithic Revolution showcased man's ability to domesticate plants. The Neolithic Revolution probably started after nomadic women, after scattering seeds, discovered crops growing. The agricultural or Neolithic Revolution was a shift from food gathering to food producing and was a great breakthrough because it allowed groups to settle permanently and to develop the first civilizations. Rising temperatures was more, most likely a key reason of the agricultural revolution. Longer growing seasons allowed for drier land for wild grasses and a constant supply of food that led to a population growth. Slash and burn farming was an early farming method. It was conducted when farmers would clear land by cutting and burning trees. Farmers then moved to a new area after a year or two. The domestication of animals is the taming of wild animals to ensure a constant food source. The advantages are many, including a food source, clothing and shelter, transportation, and power for plowing. Hunters and farmers had tamed horses, dogs, goats, and pigs. Farming had developed in many places, including Africa, China, Mexico, Central America, and Peru. Different crops developed in different areas. Section 3. Civilization. A civilization is an advanced form of culture, which is the beliefs, values, traditions, objects, and creations of a group of people. Prosperous farming villages, food surpluses, and new technology led to the rise of civilizations. Farming's success had led to larger communities. Ancient people eventually had built irrigation systems to increase food production. Food surpluses had freed some people to develop new skills. Craftspeople were able to make cloth and other objects. Traders profited, profited from exchange of goods. The invention of the wheel and the sail enabled traders to travel longer distances. Social classes eventually developed, and religion became more organized. Civilizations developed in and around river valleys that flooded annually. Some of the earliest river valleys developed in and around Mesopotamia, which is now part of modern Iraq. They all included these factors. Advanced cities, a specialized workforce, otherwise known as a division of labor, complex institutions or government systems, record keeping, also known as a writing system, and advanced technology, such as a calendar. Cities with larger populations began to rise and became centers of trade. Labor had become specialized, allowing sp specific people to work in a variety of different areas. Artisans made goods that showed their skill and artistic ability. Complex institutions can include governments, religions, and the economy. They were eventually established with governments establishing laws and maintaining order. Temples were created as the center for religion, government, and trade. Professional record keepers were known as scribes. They recorded taxes and different laws. Scribes also invented cuneiform, which was a system of writing that existed about 3000 BC. People began to write about city events. 
and there was also improved technology. New tools and techniques made work much easier. The Bronze Age had started in Sumer around 3000 BC. This was the start of metalworking. People eventually replaced copper and stone with bronze to make tools and weapons. In 1200 BC, the Iron Age began. Also, during this time period, calendars were also developed to predict yearly floods. Ur was a civilization that flourished about 3000 BC in what is now southern Iraq. The population swelled to about 30,000 individuals who lived in well-defined social classes. Rulers, priests, wealthy merchants, artisans, and soldiers were among these social classes. Ur also developed an agricultural economy. Food surpluses kept the economy thriving. Families lived in small houses tightly packed near one another. Artisans had made trade goods and weapons for the army. Goods and services were bartered in Ur. This means that they were traded without using money. Scribes made records of transactions. The temple served as the center of city life in Ur. The ziggurat, a temple, it was the tallest, most important building in the area. Priests there carried out religious rituals.